Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on complex numbers. I'm trying to show you all you need to know in maybe four videos. So in the previous video to this, I tried to motivate the topic and show you where complex numbers came from. So just to recap, first of all we had the, the number line, the regular number line which we are all familiar with. And we can see that here as we have the numbers minus 3 to 3. And of course we can extend this number line to pos positive and negative infinity. But the problem came uh, with using this number line when we decided we wanted to calculate the square root of negative numbers. We found that we couldn't do that. So we'd, we'd, we call iota as the square root of minus 1. The solution came when we decided to create another line of numbers and we call that the complex number line. And we created that by being its orthogonal or perpendicular to the regular normal line. And it's in units of iota, the square root of minus 1. And we call such a diagram an Argand diagram. So what I'm going to do now is show you why Argand, why excuse me, why negative numbers are so useful. So just bear with me and I just clean up here. Okay. So negative or complex numbers are very important in physics. They make things so much easier. So first thing we need to do is write down the general form of a complex number. Well, z is equal to a plus b times i, or i times b. Okay, so if we draw, this is our complex number plane again. So the thing about this is, instead of now just we're, us being on a number line, we can now start plotting in a two-dimensional number plane. Okay, so for example, we might have, I don't know, we might have 2 plus 2i. Two we have minus 1 minus 2i and so on right so we have these points in this complex number plane noting always of course that i is the square root of minus 1 all right now why is uh, why is it useful i will talk about it in a moment but just to just to show you how we add complex numbers and we subtract complex numbers so let's say we have z1 plus or minus z2 now before I continue actually, I'm going to rewrite this as z is x plus i times y. And why I do that is because we're used of course to being on the Cartesian plane where we have x and y. It's just easy to do it. Anyway, it's basically x1 plus x2. Excuse me, x1 plus or minus x2 plus i outside of y1 plus or minus y2. Like that, pretty straightforward. So addition and subtraction of complex numbers is simple. Now what if we multiply complex numbers, say z1 and z2? Well, once again that's pretty straightforward because you multiply by x1 by y1, i, I, y, I times y1, and so on. We multiply them all together and we, we get, get what we're looking for. So the answer is the following, it's x1, x2, minus y1, y2, and we have i outside of x1, y2, and y1 x2 like that that's how we add subtract and multiply complex numbers but what about division in order to do division we need to come up with something new called the complex conjugate so let's say we've z the, the the regular complex number z is a plus bi we define the complex conjugate of this as z star, and it's a minus bi. So in order to get the complex conjugate of a number, you change the sign of its complex component. So by the way, just to note that we have the, the complex number re is written as a real part plus an imaginary part. And we have its i times the imaginary part. Okay, so what we do is we change the sign on the imaginary part. So going back to division, how do we do division of complex numbers? Let's say we have x1 plus iy1 divided by x2 plus iy2. And we say that this is in actual fact a divided by b, two complex numbers a and b. Well, in order to do this, what we need to do is multiply above and below by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So we have x1 plus iy1 divided by x2 plus I, iy2 multiplied above and below by the co complex conjugate of the, the, the denominator.
And that's how you perform division using complex numbers. I'm not going to go much further into that. Okay, so that's how you do it. But what else can we do? What else can we note about this? Well, we note that basically taking the complex conjugate is like reflecting the number through an axis. So if we have a plus bi, it's now reflected through, let's, in this case, the x-axis. Okay, like that. So that's how we get, that's how we do the, the basic uh, operations, mathematical operations using complex numbers. Now we start getting into the useful things because I'm going to introduce cosines and sines by using Pythagoras' theorem. So let's look at the following. Once again, let's say we have z is a plus bi. Okay, so the modulus or length of this in, in, in the plane is going to be a, but we can we note it as follows because let's say actually let's say let's change that to z is x plus i times y. So we know that y is equal to a sine theta, where theta is down here, and x is equal to a cos theta. And that's simply using Pythagoras' theorem. Why is that useful? It's useful because we can now write our complex numbers a outside of cos theta plus i times sine theta. Okay, and now that's where we start to get our we that's where we start to get a very uh, useful representation of our complex numbers because what happens now we start looking for Euler's formula. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we use Euler's formula and also kind of prove it in the next video. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also put a comment in the box below. Thank you.